Bioenergy with carbon capture and storage BECCS, is a potential greenhouse gas mitigation technology which produces negative carbon dioxide emissions by combining bioenergy energy from biomass used with geologic carbon capture and storage. The concept of BECCS is drawn from the integration of trees and crops, which extract carbon dioxide CO2 from the atmosphere as they grow, the use of this biomass in processing industries or power plants, and the application of carbon capture and storage via CO2 injection into geological formations. There are other non-BECCS forms of carbon dioxide removal and storage that include technologies such as bioca, carbon dioxide air capture and biomass burial and enhanced weathering. According to a recent Biorecro report, there is 550,000 tons CO2 per year in total BECCS capacity currently operating, divided between three different facilities as of January 2012. In the IPCC fourth assessment report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change (IPCC), BECCS was indicated as a key technology for reaching low carbon dioxide atmospheric concentration targets. The negative emissions that can be produced by BECCS has been estimated by the Royal Society to be equivalent to a 50 to 150 ppm decrease in global atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations and according to the International Energy Agency, the Blue Map Climate Change Mitigation Scenario calls for more than 2 gigatons of negative CO2 emissions per year with BECCS in 2050. According to Stanford University, 10 gigatons is achievable by this date. The Imperial College London, the UK Met Office Hadley Centre for Climate Prediction and Research, the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research, the Walker Institute for Climate System Research, and the Grantham Institute for Climate Change issued a joint report on carbon dioxide removal technologies as part of the AVOID, Avoiding Dangerous Climate Change Research Program, stating that Overall, of the technologies studied in this report, BECCS has the greatest maturity and there are no major practical barriers to its introduction into today's energy system. The presence of a primary product will support early deployment," according to the OECD. Achieving lower concentration targets 450 ppm depends significantly on the use of BECCS. An alternative to BECSS is pyrogenic carbon capture and storage PYCCS. Topic: <laughs> Negative emission The main appeal of BECCS is in its ability to result in negative emissions of CO2. The capture of carbon dioxide from bioenergy sources effectively removes CO2 from the atmosphere. Bioenergy is derived from biomass, which is a renewable energy source and serves as a carbon sink during its growth. During industrial processes, the biomass combusted or processed re-releases the CO2 into the atmosphere. The process thus results in a net zero emission of CO2, though this may be positively or negatively altered depending on the carbon emissions associated with biomass growth, transport and processing, see below under environmental considerations. Carbon capture and storage CCS technology serves to intercept the release of CO2 into the atmosphere and redirect it into geological storage locations. CO2 with a biomass origin is not only released from biomass fuel power plants, but also during the production of pulp used to make paper and in the production of biofuels such as biogas and bioethanol. The BECCS technology can also be employed on such industrial processes. It is argued that through the BECCS technology, carbon dioxide is trapped in geologic formations for very long periods of time, whereas, for example, a tree only stores its carbon during its lifetime. 
In its report on the CCS technology, IPCC projects that more than 99% of carbon dioxide which is stored through geologic sequestration is likely to stay in place for more than 1,000 years. While other types of carbon sinks such as the ocean, trees and soil may involve the risk of negative feedback loops at increased temperatures, BECCS technology is likely to provide a better permanence by storing CO2 in geological formations. The amount of CO2 that has been released to date is believed to be too much to be able to be absorbed by conventional sinks such as trees and soil in order to reach low emission targets. In addition to the presently accumulated emissions, there will be significant additional emissions during this century, even in the most ambitious low emission scenarios. BECCS has therefore been suggested as a technology to reverse the emission trend and create a global system of net negative emissions. This implies that the emissions would not only be zero, but negative, so that not only the emissions, but the absolute amount of CO2 in the atmosphere would be reduced. <laughs> <laughs> Application Cost <laughs> 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 The sustainable technical potential for net negative emissions with BECCS has been estimated to 10 GT of CO2 equivalent annually, with an economic potential of up to 3.5 GT of CO2 equivalent annually at a cost of less than €50 Euros per tonne, and up to 3.9 GT of CO2 equivalent annually at a cost of less than €100 Euros per tonne. Currently, most schematic BECCS systems are not cost efficient compared to normal CCS. The IPCC states that estimations for BECCS cost range from $60 to $250 per tonne of CO2. On the other hand, normal CCS from coal and natural gas processing costs have been decreasing to less than $35 per tonne. With limited large-scale testing, BECCS faces many challenges to be a financially viable alternative. Topic: Technology. The main technology for CO2 capture from biotic sources generally employs the same technology as carbon dioxide capture from conventional fossil fuel sources. Broadly, three different types of technologies exist, post-combustion, pre-combustion, and oxy-fuel combustion. Pre-combustion Pre-combustion carbon capture refers to the process of capturing CO2 before the energy generations. It is often composed of five operating stations, oxygen generation, Singer's generation, CO2 separation, CO2 compression, and power generation. Basically, the fuel will first go through a gasification process by reacting with oxygen to form a stream of CO and H2, which is Singer's. The products will then go through a water gas shift reactor to form CO2 and H2. The CO2 that is produced will then be captured, and the H2, which is a clean source, will be used for combustion to generate energy. The process of gasification combined with Singer's production is called Integrated Gasification Combined Cycle .Normally, it would require an air separation unit to serve as the oxygen source. However, research proves that with the same flue gas, oxygen gasification has little advantage over air gasification, and they both have a similar thermal efficiency of roughly 70% using coal as the fuel source. Thus, the use of ASU is not really necessary in pre-combustion. Biomass is considered «sulfur-free» as a fuel for the pre-combustion capture. However, there are other trace elements in biomass combustion such as K and Na that could accumulate in the system and finally cause the degradation of the mechanical parts. 
thus, further developments of the separation techniques for those trace elements are needed. And also, after the gasification process, CO2 takes up to 13% to 15.3% by mass in the Singer's stream for biomass sources, while it is only 1.7% to 4.4% for coal. This limit the conversion of CO to CO2 in the water gas shift, and the production rate for H2 will decrease accordingly. However, the thermal efficiency of the pre-combustion capture using biomass resembles that of coal which is around 62% to 100%. Besides, some researchers also proved that instead of using a biomass, water slurry fuel feed, using a dry system is more thermally efficient and also more practical for biomass. Oxycombustion. See also, oxy-fuel combustion process Oxy-fuel combustion has been a common process in the glass, cement and steel industries. It is also a promising technological approach for CCS. In oxy-fuel combustion, the main difference from conventional air firing is that the fuel is burned in a mixture of O2 and recycled flue gas. The O2 is produced by an air separation unit ASU, which removes the atmospheric N2 from the oxidizer stream. By removing the N2 upstream of the process, a flue gas rich in CO2 and water vapor is produced, which eliminates the need for a post-combustion capture plant. The water vapor can be removed by condensation, leaving a product stream of relatively high purity CO2 which, after subsequent purification and dehydration, can be pumped to a geological storage site. The key challenges of BECCS implementation using oxy combustion method is associated with combustion process. For the high volatile content biomass, the mill temperature has to be maintained at low temperature to prevent the risk of fire and explosion. In addition, the flame temperature is lower. Therefore, the concentration of oxygen needs to be increased up to 27 to 30%. <laughs> Post-combustion In addition to pre-combustion and oxy-fuel combustion technologies, post-combustion is a promising technology which can be used to extract CO2 emission from biomass fuel resources. During the process, CO2 is separated from the other gases in the flue gas stream after the biomass fuel is burnt and undergo separation process. Because it has the ability to be retrofitted to some existing power plants such as steam boilers or other newly built power stations, post-combustion technology is considered as a better option than pre-combustion technology. According to the fact sheets U.S. consumption of bioenergy with carbon capture and storage released in March 2018, the efficiency of post-combustion technology is expected to be 95% while pre-combustion and oxy-combustion capture CO2 at an efficient rate of 85% and 87.5% respectively. Development for current post-combustion technologies has not been entirely done due to several problems. One of the major concerns using this technology to capture carbon dioxide is the parasitic energy consumption. If the capacity of the unit is designed to be small, the heat loss to the surrounding is great enough to cause to many negative consequences. Another challenge of post combustion carbon capture is how to deal with the mixture's components in the flue gases from initial biomass materials after combustion. The mixture consists a high amount of alkali metals, halogens, acidic elements, and transition metals which might have negative impacts on the efficiency of the process. Thus, the choice of specific solvents and how to manage the solvent process should be carefully designed and operated. Topic biofuels In BECCS Biofuels used in BECCS are versatile, including solid biofuels, gaseous biofuels, and liquid biofuels. Biomass, a type of solid biofuels, is the main feedstock for BECCS currently. 
Biomass sources used in BECCS include agricultural residues and waste, forestry residue and waste, industrial and municipal wastes, and energy crops specifically grown for use as fuel. Current BECCS projects capture CO2 from ethanol bio-refinery plants and municipal solid waste MSW recycling center. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Current project. Up to date, there have been 23 BECCS projects around the world, with the majority in North America and Europe. Today, there are only six projects in operation, capturing CO2 from ethanol bio-refinery plants and MSW recycling centers. Five BECSS projects have been cancelled due to the difficulty of obtaining the permission as well as their economic viability. The cancelled projects include, the White Rose CCS project at Selby, UK can capture about 2 mt CO2 per year from Drax Power Station and store CO2 at the Bunter Sandstone. The Rufiji Cluster project at Tanzania plan to capture around 5.0 to 7.0 mt CO2 per year and store CO2 at the Saline Aquifer. The Greenville project at Ohio, USA has capacity of capturing 1 mt CO2 per year. The Wallula project was planned to capture 0.75 mt CO2 per year at Washington, USA. Finally, the CO2 sink project at Ketzen, Germany. Topic: <laughs> At ethanol plants. Illinois Carbon Capture and Storage is one of the milestones, being the first industrial scaled BECCS project in the early 21st century. Located in Decatur, Illinois, USA, ILCCS captures CO2 from Archer Daniels Midland ethanol plant. The captured CO2 is then injected under the deep saline formation at Mount Simon Sandstone. ILCCS consists of two phases. The first being a pilot project which was implemented from 11 2011 to 11 2014. Phase 1 has a capital cost of around $84 million. Over the three-year period, the technology successfully captured and sequestered 1 million ton of CO2 from the ADM plant to the aquifer. No leaking of CO2 from the injection zone was found during this period. The project is still being monitored for future reference. The success of Phase 1 motivated the deployment of Phase 2, bringing ILCCS and BECCS to industrial scale. Phase 2 has been in operation since 11 2017 and also used the same injection zone at Mount Simon Sandstone as Phase 1. The capital cost for second phase is about $208 million US dollars including $141 million US dollar fund from the Department of Energy. Phase 2 has capturing capacity about three times larger than the pilot project phase one. Annually, ILCCS can capture more than 1 million ton of CO2. With the largest of capturing capacity, ILCCS is currently the largest BECCS project in the world. In addition to the ILCCS project, there are about three more projects that capture CO2 from the ethanol plant at smaller scales. For example, Arcalon at Kansas, USA can capture 0.18 to 0.29 mt CO2 per year. OCAP at Netherlands can capture about 0.1 to 0.3 mt CO2 per year, and Husky Energy at Canada can capture 0.09 to 0.1 mt CO2 per year. Topic at MSW recycling centers Beside capturing CO2 from the ethanol plants, currently, there are two models in Europe are designed to capture CO2 from the processing of municipal solid waste. 
The Klemetsrud plant at Oslo, Norway used biogenic municipal solid waste to generate 175 gigawatt-hours and capture 315 k-ton of CO2 each year. It uses absorption technology with Aka Solution Advanced Amine Solvent as a CO2 capture unit. Similarly, the ARV Duiven at Netherlands uses the same technology, but it captures less CO2 than the previous model. ARV Duiven generates around 126 gigawatt hours and only capture 50 k ton of CO2 each year. Topic: <laughs> Techno economics of BECCS and the Tesbic project. The largest and most detailed techno-economic assessment of BECCS was carried out by CMCL Innovations and the Tesbic Group techno-economic study of biomass to CCS in 2012. This project recommended the most promising set of biomass-fueled power generation technologies coupled with carbon capture and storage CCS. The project outcomes lead to a detailed biomass CCS roadmap for the UK. Topic: Challenges. Topic: Environmental considerations. Some of the environmental considerations and other concerns about the widespread implementation of BECCS are similar to those of CCS. However, much of the critique towards CCS is that it may strengthen the dependency on depletable fossil fuels and environmentally invasive coal mining. This is not the case with BECCS, as it relies on renewable biomass. There are however other considerations which involve BECCS and these concerns are related to the possible increased use of biofuels. Biomass production is subject to a range of sustainability constraints, such as, scarcity of arable land and fresh water, loss of biodiversity, competition with food production, deforestation and scarcity of phosphorus. It is important to make sure that biomass is used in a way that maximizes both energy and climate benefits. There has been criticism to some suggested BECCS deployment scenarios, where there would be a very heavy reliance on increased biomass input. Large areas of land would be required to operate BECCS on an industrial scale. To remove 10 billion tons of CO2, upwards of 300 million hectares of land area larger than India would be required. As a result, BECCS risks using land that could be better suited to agriculture and food production, especially in developing countries. These systems may have other negative side effects. There is however presently no need to expand the use of biofuels in energy or industry applications to allow for BECCS deployment. There is already today considerable emissions from point sources of biomass-derived CO2, which could be utilized for BECCS. Though, in possible future bioenergy system upscaling scenarios, this may be an important consideration. Upscaling BECCS would require a sustainable supply of biomass, one that does not challenge our land, water, and food security. Using bioenergy crops as feedstock will not only cause sustainability concerns but also require the use of more fertilizer leading to soil contamination and water pollution. Moreover, crop yield is generally subjected to climate condition, i.e. the supply of this bio-feedstock can be hard to control. Bioenergy sector must also expand to meet the supply level of biomass. Expanding bioenergy would require technical and economic development accordingly. Topic: Technical challenges. 
Just as other carbon capture and storage technologies, one of the challenges of applying BECCS technology is to find suitable geographic locations to build combustion plant and to sequester captured CO2. If biomass sources are not close by the combustion unit, transporting biomass emits CO2 offsetting the amount of CO2 captured by BECCS. BECCS also face technical concerns about efficiency of burning biomass. While each type of biomass has a different heating value, biomass in general is a low-quality fuel. Thermal conversion of biomass has a typical efficiency of 20–27%. Coal-fired plant has an efficiency of about 37% for comparison. BECCS also faces a question whether the process is actually energy positive. Low energy conversion efficiency, energy intensive biomass supply, combined with the energy required to power the CO2 capture and storage unit impose energy penalty on the system. This might lead to a low power generation efficiency. Potential solutions Topic: Alternative biomass sources Topic: Agricultural and forestry residues Globally, there are 14 GT of forestry residue and 4.4 GT residues from crop production mainly barley, wheat, corn, sugarcane and rice are generated every year. This is a significant amount of biomass which can be combusted to generate 26 EJ per year and achieve a 2.8 GT of negative CO2 emission through BECCS. Utilizing residues for carbon capture will provide social and economic benefits to rural communities. Using waste from crops and forestry is a way to avoid the ecological and social challenges of BECCS. Municipal solid waste Municipal solid waste MSW is one of the newly developed source of biomass. Two current BECCS plants are using MSW as feedstocks. Waste collected from daily life is recycled via incineration waste treatment process. Waste goes through high temperature thermal treatment and the heat generated from combusting organic part of waste is used to generate electricity. CO2 emitted from this process is captured through absorption using Mayer. For every 1 kg of waste combusted, 0.7 kg of negative CO2 emission is achieved. Utilizing solid waste also have other environmental benefits. Topic: <laughs> Co-firing coal with biomass. There are current 200 co-firing plants in the world, including 40 in the U.S. Study showed that by mixing coal with biomass, we could reduce the amount of CO2 emitted. The concentration of CO2 in the flue gas is an important key to determine the efficiency of CO2 capture technology. The concentration of CO2 in the flue gas from the co-firing power plant is roughly the same as coal plant, about 15% one. This means that we can reduce our reliance on fossil fuel. Even though co-firing will have some energy penalty, it still offers higher net efficiency than the biomass combustion plants. Co-firing biomass with coal will result more energy production with less input material. Currently, the modern 500 MW coal power plant can take up to 15% biomass without changing the component of the steam boiler. This promising potential allows co firing power plant become more favorable than dedicated bioelectricity. 
It is estimated that by replacing 25% of coal with biomass at existing power plant in China and the US, we can reduce emission by 1 GT per year. The amount of negative CO2 emitted depends on the composition of coal and biomass. 10% biomass can reduce 0.5 GT CO2 per year and with 16% biomass can achieve zero emission. Direct co-firing give us negative emission of minus 26 kg CO2 per megawatt hour from 93 kg CO2 per megawatt hour. Biomass co-firing with coal has efficiency near those of coal combustion. Co-firing can be easily applied to existing coal-fired power plant at low cost. The implementation of co-firing power plant on the global scale is still a challenge. The biomass resources have to meet strictly the sustainability criteria and the co-firing project would need the support in terms of economic and policy from the governments. Even though co-firing plant may be an immediate solution to solve the global warming and climate change issues, co-firing still has some challenges that need to consider. Due to the moisture content of biomass, it will affect the calorific value of the combustor. In addition, high volatile biomass would highly influence the reaction rate and the temperature of the reactor, especially, it may lead to the explosion of furnace. Policy <inaudible> 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 Based on the current Kyoto Protocol Agreement, carbon capture and storage projects are not applicable as an emission reduction tool to be used for the Clean Development Mechanism or for Joint Implementation projects. Recognizing CCS technologies as an emission reduction tool is vital for the implementation of such plants as there is no other financial motivation for the implementation of such systems. There has been growing support to have fossil CCS and BECCS included in the protocol. Accounting studies on how this can be implemented, including BECCS, have also been done. The existing policy, such as Committee on Climate Change in 2015, promotes the widespread use of BECCS achieve net zero emission goal set by Paris Agreement. If carbon taxes were used to deploy BECCS, then the revenues from the climate policies is expected to be approximately 0.3% GDP by 2030. Also, there are some future policies that give incentives to use bioenergy such as Renewable Energy Directive and Fuel Quality Directive which require 20% of total energy consumption to be based on biomass, bioliquids and biogas by 2020. In February, 2018, U.S. Congress significantly increased and extended the Section 45Q tax credit for sequestration of carbon oxides. This has been a top priority of carbon capture and sequestration CCS supporters for several years. It increased $25.70 to $50 tax credit per tons of CO2 for secure geological storage and $15.30 to $35 tax credit per ton of CO2 used in enhanced oil recovery. topic future outlook In the 2014 Ampere modeling project based on eight different integrated assessment models the future deployment of BECCS is predicted to meet the future 2 degrees Celsius scenario in the Paris agreement and the overall situation seems pretty optimistic in the middle of the 21st century, the scale of the BECCS deployment ranges from 0 mount to 1100 mount CO2 per year. And by the end of the century, the deployment ranges from 720 mount to 7500 mount CO2 per year, while most of the models predict the scale to be within 1000 mount to 3000 mount by 2100. A research group from Stanford University has modeled the technical potential of BECCS in the US in the year 2020. 
According to their calculations, about one third of the potential biomass production in total is located close enough to the geological storage site, which results in a CO2 capturing capability of 110 mount 120 mount. Topic. See also. Biosequestration Carbon dioxide removal Carbon negative Climate change mitigation scenarios Climate engineering List of emerging technologies Low carbon economy United Nations Environment Programme Virgin Earth Challenge <laughs>